Well, we're back with you live on air here, broadcasting from uh, the uh, from Sutherland. We are broadcasting from the Southern African largest telescope at the South African Astro Astronomical Observatory. Goodness me, it is windy here. I, I I can't even I can't emphasize enough how much the wind is 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 howling here. In fact, our signal went down to you, and uh, what we had to do was move our truck. Now, what happens is that you've got your your OB vans that have these satellite dishes on top of the trucks. We had to actually move the truck to another location uh, that was a little bit shielded from the wind otherwise those satellite dishes would have snapped off and, uh, and and broken due to these winds it is I mean it's it's unbelievable I did something you can't explain you need to experience it for yourself in fact I was walking back into the uh, telescope and uh, I had the winds behind me I don't think I've ever walked that fast in my life before record-breaking stuff I can tell you anyway it's been such a fascinating morning here it really has been I hope that you've enjoyed the broadcast as much as we have enjoyed bringing it to you you. Um, before our satellite broke down, in fact, we were having such a wonderful conversation with um, uh, Dr. Ramatolo Tsefako. He's the head of the Small Telescope Operations. We've been referring to these small telescopes for um, the majority of the broadcast, and we're inside SALT, which is obviously the main telescope here, but there are lots of other telescopes from different countries and companies set up here. And uh, let's get a little bit more detail about them once again and uh, just speak to um, Tsefako about them, I mean uh, Ramatolo about them. So we talk about these telescopes that are set up so they belong to different countries and companies to just tell us a little bit again about them so like I said I, I mentioned ours so so the, the the rest of the telescopes are actually belonging to different countries um, there are quite many of them so you know they range from the smallest which is really the size of a camera yeah. um, it's called kilo degree extremely little telescope which is the size of uh, four and a half centimeters but it can see a really large part of the sky at once, uh, but it's a very small one. And to those that um, you mentioned, the uh, Google telescopes, <laughs> uh, they are owned by you know, one of the uh, former CEOs of uh, Google. Um, and and this, this guy actually, went, when, when he retired from, from Google, he he invested his, his money into building telescopes around the world and, and South Africa was one of the places uh, where um, these telescopes are built and they're called Las Cumbres. Um, optical uh, <laughs> <laughs> teles telescope, LCOGT. Leave it at that. It sounds good enough. It sounds good enough. So, I mean, there's... A network of telescopes. Yeah. And we have, uh, you know, other telescopes from Poland, for example, um, two of them. And um, uh, other telescopes, there's one from, from, from uh, built by Japanese, uh, it's called IRSF. Uh, it's an infrared telescope. It's the only infrared telescopes up here. And then we have Super Wasp, which is really chasing planets. So they, yeah. they, they are looking at planets. Uh, it's also a smaller telescope. It's a network of t telescopes around the world. Yeah. Do they, uh, are there operators that are based here for those telescopes? Do so they live here or do they come in at regular bases? Most of, uh, of, uh, of these uh, international telescopes are robotic telescopes. They, they operate on their own. Wow. So they, operate, you know, they are actually t told what to do from wherever the owners are actually so they they actually working on their own you know day well you know we even have a solar monitor which actually has been working here since 90, 1981 yeah. which uh, it's also robotic it follows the sun you know when the sun comes up it it actually follows it and and when it uh, it, it um when the sun sets it, it it closes itself so they are more or less like that all, all, all the telescope that we had uh, that uh, are owned by by uh, our international partners. That's absolutely fantastic. I mean, one thing we haven't actually told viewers as yet, and I think it's important to get out there, is you can also wa watch this and witness some of the things online. I mean, you can actually see what the scientists and the astronomers are looking at online on the website that uh, that's that's running here. Is that is it is that right? Live information going on? Yes, we do have a number of environmental things like weather <laughs> and something called seeing, where you actually you know check the uh, turbulence in, in in the sky. So, you know, we, we monitor those and we have also all sky monitors that, uh, you know, are just, um, you know, but uh, the telescope themselves, you, you know, it's, it's really difficult to actually, you know, uh, do observations live because you can actually do that, but, uh, you know, because sometimes you have to 
uh, analyze the data before you can actually see uh, exactly what what is happening here. Yeah, yeah. Listen, it's been so interesting speaking to you and you, and I think you're an inspiration to a lot of the students out there as well. I mean, there's one thing I I have to tell you as I say goodbye to Dr. Ramatolo Sefako. He is one of the first three black astrophysicists that we have here in South Africa, and I think that's just something to be so so proud of. And 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 just keep up this amazing work that you're doing. And thanks for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now. We really do want to focus a little bit on the learners right now because this is what it's all about. And, and when we look at the learners that are here in the area, it's, it's quite nice to see that uh, so many of them seem to be taking to this field and actually moving in the line of, uh, of astronomy. And um, I mean, to enter this field and study of astronomy, we've got uh, students that will need matric exemptions and physical science in order to do it, and mathematics on a higher grade. Uh, computer science and additional mathematics are also recommended. It uh, can be quite daunting for most learners, but uh, joining me now, I've got two learners and I've also got, I think it's Anthony Mitas, who's, Anthony, where are you from? Um, thank you, Leanne. Good morning to you and the viewers as well. My, I'm from Sutherland originally. Excellent. I was born here, yeah. I grew up here, just went a bit to the Western Cape to go and complete my studies and Excellent. I'm back here in Sutherland. Excellent. Anthony, it's good to have you. And I've also got two students here from Hoer School Sutherland. Um, it's good to have you with us, Isha Dalanga and Yakin October, right? Good to have you. Um, Welcome. Welcome. I'm from Sutherland and I'm going there. And I want to study engineering, like sound engineering or chemical engineering. And I like to do IT too. Fantastic. Good stuff. And what, are you, what about you? Um, I like to study become accounting and yeah, and maybe I want to be, uh, but I'm still considering um, to be um, like a science teacher also. So you want to go into into science teaching too. Now, what what we've got here, Anthony? I mean, you've got a you've got a, a the, the program, the outreach program that's here in this area. Um, talk to me about it. Um, the, the the benefits of this outreach program and, and how it's actually working. Yes, Leanne. So so um, we've got three strategic objectives in terms of our outreach program. The one is educational awareness. The other one is public awareness. We've got over 13,500 people per annum coming to our facility um, as a result of tours that we often offer at the observatory. So, so then we've got the very co important component of socio-economic development. Um, and charity begins at home, so our immediate responsibility is towards the, the Sutherland community where we've got this community development center which we use as a resource to develop and stimulate interest and curiosity into developing fields like, like astronomy as a science. But the educational component is the main component for us. Um, we do um, teacher workshops, we do learner workshops. We're trying to support the science component for teachers in the curriculum in understanding the principles of, of astronomy and also how to, to communicate communicate these principles to the learners that might be interested. Um, our main feeding ground is at the moment uh, the Western Cape and the, and the Gauteng province. And as a result of the past few years, we decided to, to make our footprint a bit broader in this hub of astronomy in the Northern Cape. So what we do is literally because it's difficult for these schools in the Northern Cape to come literally to, South Africa, to, South, to Sutherland. So we pack up our vehicle, put mobile telescopes in, and we take the observatory to these learners in the remote areas of the Northern Cape. That's incredible. It really is amazing what you're doing. I want to speak to the learners quickly. We don't have too much time, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to squeeze past you here just so I can come and chat to you. I mean, having something like this on your doorstep, I know I'm in the way here, um, having something like this on the doorstep for you, does it inspire you to, to want to know what's going on out there and, and study the stars and enjoy everything that they have to offer? Yes, it do inspire us to go and study further and see what is out there because it looks very interesting in um, the stars in the galaxy. It just it is amazing. <laughs> yeah, it must be absolutely amazing. What about for you? I mean, just talk to me about a little bit about going into this industry and wanting to study and and abuse these things that you've got right here. Yes, I just want to work here in Sutherland. Okay. It's a great opportunity and to do stuff that I can help other people too, yeah. to, to learn in, in engineering and to study it like um, SKA or the, the Meerkat or yeah. That would be nice. I mean, you know, you've got people that travel the world to come here and it's right here. And it's so nice to see youngsters as yourself that you don't want to learn and leave. You want to learn and stay here in Sutherland, which is a good thing. I mean, do you find that happens with a lot of your friends and, 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 and the other learners from the schools? Um, we don't find that they, they go and study, but they don't come back to give to the community to put in more than what their community have given to them. Like, 
when they study engineering, they don't come back. They stay in the Cape Town or somewhere else, but they don't come back. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's learners like you that are hopefully going to come back and, and, and use this to your benefit. Yes. Excellent. So nice to have all of you here on the program. And thank you so much for talking to us about the development programs. Um, I, listen, I'm going to say goodbye from, from my side. But I mean, Phil, I know you've still got a little bit of a weather update to give. I mean, hasn't this just been a, a stunning, stunning broadcast? Uh, I do have a, a little bit of weather update. Really, uh, there isn't much to say. It is very, very cold in Southern. And uh, if you were here, you would understand. It is cold, it is windy, and it has been all morning. But what a pleasure it has been uh, to be here and uh, to be broadcasting from here. Uh, I'm not sure I'll ever feel my fingers again, but uh, hey, there we go. It's, uh, it's all part of the broadcast, and we've been bringing it to you live, living the weather, living the weather here in Sutherland for today. Indeed, living the weather. That's an absolute fact. Anyway, listen, we're going to say goodbye to you from here. Thank Thank you so much for watching and thanks for bearing with us through some of the breakdowns in transmission but I, a, a lot less than we expected with the winds out there I think it's been absolutely amazing so thanks for watching and one thing I have to urge you is you've got to come down and visit this you have to see it with your own eyes I mean it's one thing seeing it on a television screen but when you're actually standing outside at night looking up at those stars you know what you see in the city um, is nothing you kind of see a handful of stars when you're here it feels like you're seeing all of them them, billions and billions of these incredible, incredible stars up there. It's been a, a wonderful experience. Yeah, like you say, it's, it's as if you have 3D glasses on and it's, it's all around you. I yeah. mean, it's absolutely beautiful. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a beautiful weekend. We're back with you. Uh, even though it's a public holiday on Monday, of course, we're always with you bright and early Monday morning on that Workers' Day holiday. Take care. God bless you and have a wonderful weekend. Will you shop?